Hello guys, welcome. I hope you're enjoying your day. My name is Kasia and I run a Polish channel about growing orchids at home as houseplants. Once a week I will post an English video, so if you end up enjoying, feel free to subscribe. And please forgive my accent, obviously English is not my native language. With that being said, let's talk about fertilizing orchids. Starting from the very beginning, where do orchids get nutrients from in their natural habitat? Over 70% of all orchids are epiphytes. Their roots are not growing in nutrient-rich soil, but rather hang from tree trunks or grow on rocks, where nutrients are very scarce. Rotting leaves and other organic matter, like for example bird poo, due to biological and chemical processes release the nutrients, which are then obtained by plants. Because food is so scarce, orchids store it in their structures and can survive months or even years without fertilizing. They do grow very slow, so it might be difficult to see nutrient deficiencies on your orchid at first. But without proper fertilizer, your orchid will be weaker, blooming less impressive, and eventually the orchid will start to fuss more and more. And the lack of fertilizer might indirectly lead to your orchid's demise. If you water your orchid with tap water, it might get some nutrients, like calcium and magnesium, but if you water with rain or distilled water, your orchid has no access to nutrients at all. Moreover, we use potting media that contains no nutrients either, like for example bark chips. Orchids differ so much from our other houseplants, and therefore they require different fertilizing. That is why we use special fertilizers that contain proper ratio of nutrients, and are especially recommended for orchids and their needs of nutrient intake. Even though in nature there's not much food, there is always some, and orchids became experts in extracting it. While growing on windowsills, it's our responsibility to provide them food. If we use all-purpose fertilizer for our orchids, most likely we will burn their delicate roots. Choosing a proper orchid fertilizer is very important, especially if you're a beginner and don't yet know exactly what you're doing. On the market we can find many orchid fertilizers. How do we know how to choose the best one? Well, above all, let's take orchids' needs into consideration. I'm sure you're familiar with Healthy Eating Pyramid. It is a nutrition guide that suggests quantities of each food category that a human should eat each day. If we wanted to make one for orchids, it would contain elements. On the bottom we would have nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. In the middle, calcium and magnesium. And on the very top, iron, manganese, zinc, boron, copper, molybdenum and silicon. See, orchids need all these elements to thrive, but in different quantities. They need nitrogen to produce lush foliage, phosphorus to bloom, calcium to build cell walls, magnesium to produce chlorophyll that is needed to photosynthesize. And what for they need the elements from the top of our pyramid, we do not fully understand yet, but we know they do need them. Those are called macro and micro elements. While choosing a fertilizer for your orchid, make sure it contains both, macro and micro elements. On the label of your fertilizer, you should be able to find a three-digit number, like 101010 10, 10, or 547. This number stands for the percentage amount of three most important elements in plant fertilizers, nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium. We call them NPK fertilizers. You can choose high phosphorus bloom boosters, or high nitrogen one for vegetative growth. You can alternate them throughout the year, depending on your orchid's growth stage. But if you're a beginner, it's much easier to choose a well-balanced fertilizer, with those three numbers same or close to each other, that you can use all year round, without getting confused which one to use and when. From there, you can choose liquid or powder. Both of them have to be diluted in water. Powder one is usually more economical, and lasts you longer. Synthetic or organic? Well, the synthetic one has nutrients available for orchids instantly, while organic one needs to decompose in your orchid pot first to actually release them. For that reason, many orchid growers choose synthetic fertilizers, as they know beforehand which elements in what quantities it contains. Ultimately, it's your personal choice. After choosing your fertilizer, the next thing to consider is your fertilizing schedule and the dosage. You should never exceed recommended dosage, especially with synthetic fertilizers, as you can easily burn your orchid roots that way. Not only you should not exceed it, it's actually better to cut it in half if you're a beginner, and go from there, slowly increasing the dosage. You can fertilize your orchid once a month, 
and it's recommended to water it before applying fertilizer, as dry roots are more likely to get damaged by higher dosage. Very popular and much safer method is famous weekly weekly. You simply fertilize your orchids every watering, but with one fourth of the recommended dosage. Once a month you water without fertilizer, with pure water, to get rid of any salts buildup. This method is relatively safe, as you do not shock the plant with high dosage, reducing the risk of burned roots. And how will you know if you over fertilized? Root tips will turn brown, looking clearly burned. Some plants will react with leaf tip dieback. Usually you'll see a layer of salts buildup on your orchid media as well. If you see any of those signs, make sure to run clean water through the pot, to wash it out. How much and how often you fertilize depends also on the orchid you have. Some of them are commonly known as heavy feeders. Usually the bigger the orchid and the bigger structures it creates, the more fertilizer it will require. Also orchids that produce a lot of structures in a short time will naturally require more fertilizer, like the Caracidum family. The most common heavy feeders are Cymbidiums, Caracidums and Phalaenopsis. On the other side of the spectrum we have Miltoniopsis, Masdevalias, Draculas and Phragmipediums. Those are very sensitive to fertilizers and salt buildups. You should always be very careful while fertilizing them. Less is better. Your potting media also plays a big role in your fertilizing schedule. Media that holds more water will also hold on to more fertilizer. You should be more careful and stingy while fertilizing orchids potted in clay pallets or sphagnum, as those two will hold on to fertilizer longer than bark, causing salt buildups and possibly burned roots. All orchids should be fertilized only during growth periods. If your plant produces new roots, leaves, pseudobulbs or flowers, it needs fuel. In the winter months when growth of your orchid is slowed down, you can fertilize with half of your usual dosage. Orchids that should receive a winter rest period, like Dendrobium nobili or Caracidum, should not be fertilized at all at that time. Proper fertilizing is an art that we learn through trial and error. My best advice is to observe your orchid and start fertilizing from small dosage, preferably weekly weekly, using well-balanced NPK fertilizer with macro and micro elements. Thank you so much for watching. I'm looking forward to your feedback. Have a great day. Bye.